so that we may leave this world without stain of sin and may merit to rest with joy in your merciful embrace. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He then said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this, signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When uh, Peter was a young man, um, like all of us, he did as he pleased. He went where he pleased, he dressed as he pleased. It means he was um, free, he did whatever he wanted to do. But Jesus uh, warns him that as an older man, later on in life, you're not gonna be free. Um, he's not free. He's uh, chained for a while, his last, um, some of his last days in prison. Someone else leads him where he doesn't wanna go, to his death, to crucifixion. When a person's free, one's general, when, is, when a person's young, that person's generally free to go where one pleases. When we're older, we're not always as free as we were in our youth, even though we might have some financial security, some of the times the limitations of um, physical limitations kind of curtail what we can and cannot do. I think um, certainly everybody starts life the same. We all start as an infant, very dependent upon our parents for everything, you know, food and shelter and clothing. Um, even as young children, we're dependent upon our parents and our life is in our own. In some sense, as little kids, our hands are stretched out and someone dresses us. Somebody buys clothing for us. We don't have money to buy what we want. Um, we're, our parents plan the menu, right? They decide what to eat. We didn't decide when we were eight years old what we are going to eat. Parents decide when and where to go for vacation. Uh, we need their permission to go see a friend, you know, just a couple houses down. They drive us around when we need to go somewhere far. Um, we depend on our parents in many ways. And I think um, for many people, we end life in a similar way. Kind of like infants dependent on somebody else, our lives and our decisions not entirely our own. For some people, and, and later on in life, others plan the menu, especially in institutional living. You know, decide what you want to eat. Sometimes um, others plan the menu even if you live at home because they want you to eat healthy, right? And along with all the other pills that you need to take. Um, sometimes others decide where to take us for holidays and vacations, even when we're you know, able-bodied. Sometimes it depends more upon children, when they're gonna come by and visit or not visit. Um, sometimes they drive us around. And we lose the independence of driving on our own. Um, it's, um, our, our freedom is limited in some ways. It's a very humbling experience to be dependent upon others. And that, that's okay, because we end up in a bit like, like Peter did later on in life. Maybe that's at the point where um, children have to make decisions for you in some ways, in some things, maybe not in everything, which is good. Sometimes children make, in, make decisions without your input, without consulting you. Sometimes they decide like where you go for the holidays, who's gonna pick you up, where you're going, where you're staying, with whom. They decide you know, where you might be spending Christmas or other holidays. Some of those things um, that happen to us, none of it happens by our own will. It's not how we want it to be. But some of those things happen to us. Like Jesus said to Peter, when you're older, someone else will decide what you wear. Someone else will tie your hands, limit your freedom. You don't have a choice in the matter later on. The thing is, um, 
those years of life, those situations, those circumstances are opportunities to practice humility. And that's not a bad thing. It's always good to be humble. Some would call it the greatest of virtues as it counteracts the vice of pride. It's good to be humble. Even in the first reading, as we hear from um, about the death of Moses, you know, um, very strong. He can see till he was uh, into his old age, but he's not allowed to enter the promised land. He worked so, so hard, 40 years wandering in the desert. He can just, he's only allowed to glimpse it. It's an sy unfinished symphony, like I was saying in this morning, something he would have loved to have done to lead them into the land flowing with milk and honey, but it wasn't in the cards for him. It's humbling. Joshua will lead them in. The young generation will lead them in, but Moses won't. And even it says that uh, they don't know where Moses is buried, an anonymous grave somewhere. It's a little bit humbling as well. Somebody as famous and well-known as Moses, doesn't, no one knows where he is. No one knew then where he was either when the book of Deuteronomy was written. Something humbling about that. There are many, um, I think, more instances in our older age that give us um, opportunities to, to practice the virtue of humility. How do you react in those situations? How do you respond? Sometimes the kids are a little bit uh, condescending in some ways. Oh, mom, use email? She haven't turned the computer on, right? Oh, dad, drive more than 60 on the freeway? It hasn't happened in 10 years that dad drove 60 miles an hour above on the freeway. And sometimes you're right there when they say those things, right? It can be very, very humbling. Or grandchildren, I said, grandma, you have so many wrinkles in your face. Or grandpa, why is there so much hair in your ear, right? And you, it's, it sounds cute, but it's not, right? <laughs> They're kind of right there. It's humbling in many ways, right? Those kinds of things that kids say. Um, sometimes it's going to the doctor's office, um, doctors that don't believe you. You know, when you say what's going on and what's wrong and what might be happening, oh, you, since when did you get the medical degree, right? I think maybe sometimes the response is not to listen to you, not to believe your opinion about your own self and your own body. Um, sometimes young people might say, oh, okay, you're just old, you're outdated, you're traditional, old-fashioned in many ways. Maybe they think your life experience counts for nothing for them, they don't want to hear it. But someday they'll be old as well and in the same, in the same boat. There was one point in the, the Acts of the Apostles where St. Paul's, Paul's critics say, oh, we need to hear you about this on another time. Tell us about this later. I think it's a lot of times the response of young people to the older generation. Yeah, let's hear about it another time. Tell me about it. I don't want to hear it now. There are a lot of things that happen, and it can be hurtful in some ways, whether you show that or not. It can be hurtful in some ways when it arrives to your heart. But it's also very humbling, and that's okay. Arguing doesn't usually solve problems later on in life. No one listens, right? No one listens anymore. I think it's just good to smile knowingly sometimes because you do know better. You have more experience. It's good to be quiet sometimes. You don't have to be right all the time. No need to engage in more arguments. Others know where you stand, you know, your family and friends. Thank, maybe thanking God for the opportunity to be humble again. It's always good to counteract our pride. Somebody's dressing you and leading you where you, where you don't want to go. And that makes you like St. Peter, makes you like St. Paul, and really it even makes you like Jesus, who in his passion was led to places where it would not have been his first choice to go to. You've accomplished much in your life, raising a family, working hard, um, giving much to the world, even just surviving. But the humility comes necessarily at the end of life with age, and it's okay. To embrace it, humility, and the circumstances that bring it about as much as possible, instead of being haughty, instead of insisting on yourself and your way, it's good to embrace humility and the lessons that come with it. Even if we don't enjoy or embrace all the physical limitations and the confines that surround it.